Hey, Tucker Bethard is on right now. Tucker, what's up, man? What's up? How you doing? Hey, good to talk to you, man. It's been a little bit since we've been able to hang out or talk. Yeah, no kidding. You doing good? Yeah, man, I'm all right. I'm all right. I was I was pumped that your music's coming out today because this is going to air on Friday. So um, I was pumped that your music's out today. Always been a big fan of yours. I think you know that. So I think uh, I want to yeah. spend a few minutes with you and just kind of talk about the new project if you're cool with that. Yeah, man, of course. Hey, where are you right now, by the way? Uh, I'm in a food line parking lot. <laughs> were, were you grocery shopping before or going after? Well, I was going to go, and then I'm like, well, shoot, I might as well just wait in this parking lot before I go because I, uh, I got a little late start. So I'm just kind of waiting it out in the food line parking lot. What are you going to go? Like, what's on the list for you to go grocery shop today? <laughs> I, I was thinking toaster strudels, but I don't really know. <laughs> So you're a guy that goes in and just kind of grabs what grabs you more than having a list. Dude, the, the worst idea anyone can do is go grocery shopping when they're hungry, you know? It's like everything looks good. Uh, there's really no telling what I'm going to come out with. All right, all right. Uh, okay, so Tucker Bethard's on right now. Um, man, let's let's check out some of these tracks here. So uh, the record's called King. Um Let's do Better Than Me. I'm going to play a clip of this. This is track one on King. Here you go. If you could sing along, and they're playing our song, with no tears in your eyes, no breaking down Tell me about this one. Why'd you pick it to start off the whole the whole project here, Tucker? I, mean, I just thought it, it's the most kind of just, it's a perfect one to, to just really get your attention with. I mean, the drums, so and heavy and the, everything about the song is just like uh, you know rock and, and uh, you know having a catchy aggressive um, song with that guitar riff and stuff just kind of in my opinion is a good way to kind of just captivate you and get get your attention. I was rolling through some of the tracks here, just looking at the uh, the, the the songwriting credits, and you have written every song, which I think is important to you. You co-wrote all the songs. You recorded all the vocals, mm-hmm. drums, and guitars yourself. That, I mean, that's mm-hmm. a lot of work. So why in the world would you feel like you needed to do all that? <laughs> I mean, I think I'm just a really, like, particular artist. Like, I mean, I kind of hear the stuff in, in my head. And, and you know, the, the players in Nashville are, you know, hands down some of the best in the world. But, but there are certain, like, unique um, things that, that you can only get with with me playing, not you know, and and just each each one of these songs, you just it it's just as me as as I can make them, and and um, there's certain unique just ways of playing certain riffs or, or drums that you know you can't get with. Sometimes you gotta have like make it sound not as perfect as you know the cliche they would say is perfect. Um, just for the character aspect, and I don't know, I just have fun building the songs and and producing, putting the pieces together by myself. Really, I'll play some of a track that I really liked that stood out to me was uh, track five on the project called Paper Town. Here's a clip of that. And wake up these horses and let them run wild. Feed them some gas and wrap them for miles. Slat on your shades, paint up your lips. So tell me about this. You walk into the writing room. You, Phil O'Donnell, Monty Criswell are sitting around. How in the world does Paper Town come up as a concept? And tell me about that. Man, Monty Criswell, um, I mean, Phil too, but Monty Criswell is one of those guys that that he just he just has, like, titles and ideas, like, just titles that, that are so unique and, and just so good. And then, so he, he'll just, and I'm usually the one who, who will always have like uh, music for for whatever, and um, and he just said that title, and I'm like, man, that's kind of a cool, that's a cool idea, and and I had that roof and that feel, that kind of shuffle feel, and we just really wanted to write it around the concept of just two kids wanting to, you know, kind of just ditch the town and and have something to prove almost, and it just ha- kind of have that young love attitude and. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fun one. That's, that's that's one of my favorite ones too because oh, yeah. it's the only one on the album that has that shuffle like 
feel, which which kind of is a good addition to to the whole project. I want to walk through a couple more tracks real quick, and I'll do I Ain't Without You. Um, you wrote this with one other person. You can uh, tell me about who you wrote it with and tell me what this song's about. Yeah, man. Yeah, go ahead. We got you. Oh, sorry. I... Yeah, no, that, that's the... Uh... That's the one that really, um, that song right there is the one that really finally made me feel like the whole project came full circle and was, and was complete. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's written after, um, from the experience of, uh, my little brother passing away and, and just the idea of, of the strength that I found in my faith and, and the Lord. And I knew the only one that, um, could really, I could really take that idea too and write that with, and I wanted to write it with was, was my dad because we were both going through the same thing. And, and, um, that's the, that's really the song that, that to me put a, put the cap on the album and it finally felt like it was ready. One more track. This is called faithful. This is track 11. Love this one too. Check this one out. But hey, All right, this is the last track I'm going to have you comment on, Tucker. Tell me about Faithful here. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it, that's uh, kind of the song that set the tone for, for, for a lot of my career. I mean, aside from from Rock On, obviously, but, but that song was one in like 2015 that put out on YouTube, uh, acoustic, like just solo um, live performance, uh, and, and it kind of just took off and... and um, um, everyone who's been following me is familiar with it and, and been waiting for it, and, and it's kind of a cool. It's cool because this project is is such a special project for me, and it's like a timeline and a journey. It's really reflects on the journey that I've had so far as an artist, and that song is kind of where a lot of it started. And um, so it's cool to have songs like I Hate Without You and Faithful um, on the same project because they're both just marked big significant times in my life and career and it's cool to finally have uh have be able to put out this album because this is my first album released with the record label which is which is crazy but it's but it's a special one for sure all right 13 tracks it's called king you know i know in december the whole town was hurting for you man um you know when your brother passed away and you actually named the record after your brother it's his middle it was his middle name right yeah and that decision, who, yeah. Who 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 did you kind of walk through that decision with? Your dad, your brothers? No, man. It, it was really just kind of kind of my own thing. I mean, because the whole project just started feeling. Because a lot of this project was recorded at the same time. I independently released that my previous record, the Nobody's Everything. I still had this whole half, and it was going to be like a part two thing. But then I just started writing new songs and, and experiencing new things and. And it just kind of grew, started feeling like it just grew into its own project and it, and it was its own separate thing. And specifically when that happened, um, it was like, yeah, man, this is a totally different chapter for me. And um, and my brother played such a big role in, in, in influencing me as, as a person and, and as an artist um, with his time on earth and, and is continuing his legacy continuing to do that to me while he's in heaven. And, and, um, you know, I just wanted a piece of him forefront on this project because it's special to me. And, and I know he's, he's, a, if anyone would, is happy for me more than ever, he's, he's the one. I mean, he's, he's always been my biggest supporter. So I've got three questions. And I'm going to let you go. They're all pretty short questions. Number one is I was looking at, uh, as I was, finding some of these tracks to be able to listen to fully, not just, you know, to hear the the samples that the, the label sends me. And I was looking for Rock On, the song from back in the day. It's not on, I couldn't find it on a streaming service. You, pu- you pulled it? <laughs> Dude, I didn't do that. Man, that, that's a, that's a product of, um, of previous record label. When I think they kind of got offended when, when I decided I wanted to set, split ways with them and, and um, so they kind of took down 
the five songs that I, I released with them, which, you know, to be honest, I was pretty, I was pretty happy about it. Not going to lie. Just because <laughs> like, man, if, if I, now I finally, finally got the freedom that I want as an artist. Like this is how I want to start now. So it's like a whole clean slate. So, all right. You know, it all is right. what it is. Uh, the second thing I was online and, just as a personal story, I tried to, you know, we have the B team now, which is a bunch of our listeners that come together to do good things for others. Um, and for, before it was the B team, I tried the boners, and they didn't like that. Um, but, <laughs> but you have the mother tuckers. Now, was there, what did your folks say about when you said, hey, we're going to do the mother tuckers? <laughs> I mean, I think I was surprised, surprised, and I think everybody was kind of on board with it. I mean, I remember, uh, me, me and my brothers growing up, we, we had a little band and we were always thinking of names and I always wanted to name the band Mother, Mother Tucker and, and they obviously were like, no, oh, that's, that's, that's too much of just you, you know, and, <laughs> uh, but now that I got my own fan club, it's like, of course I'm finally going to utilize that name. <laughs> All right, final question. Uh, what flavor of toaster strudel will you be pursuing? Man, you know, whatever catches my eye, but I usually gravitate towards uh, strawberry or blueberry. Yeah, the berries. I, I, I'm yeah. a big red guy. Cherry, strawberry. If it's red, it all tastes the same to me anyway, so red makes me feel better. <laughs> all right, there he is, Tucker Bethard. Yeah. I love the guy. I love, love his music. Um, at Tucker Bethard uh, on Instagram. It's 13 tracks. It's called King. Uh, go check it out. Go, go sample it. Find a few tracks. We went through some of them here today, but uh, there, there, there's a lot. The guy definitely has a voice. He he says something specific. You may love it, you may hate it, but you're you're gonna understand what he's saying. Um, and and I can always appreciate that from an artist, Tucker. So it's good to talk to you, and hopefully I'll see uh see you around pretty soon. Yeah, man, good to talk to you. Thanks for having me. All right, see you, Tucker. All right, see you. Hey guys, it's Bobby Bones. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and then go check it out. A lot of artists, a lot of songwriters, a lot of music. Welcome to the Bobby Cash channel.